I'm Dan and I've been designing kitchen products for 38 years. I'm gonna test gadgets that peel and see if I can find a way to make them better. Concave, something like a cheese grater. Duck tail there, some sort of shape like that. These are the products I'm going to test. Alligator onion peeler, shrimp peeler, tater mix, potato express, garlic shaker, Alligator onion peeler. Its purpose in life is to peel onions. Let's test its effectiveness. To start, I'm just gonna cut off the ends of the onion. I'm going to insert the onion, and let's see what it does. First one down. And second one down. It's taking a bit of work, and I gotta say, that wasn't wonderful. Let's give it another shot. For fun, I'm gonna just turn the onion upside down, see if that makes any difference. Not great. The other problem we may see is that the size of the onion is limited to this circle, to this diameter. So I'm gonna try a large onion, which is not an unusual onion to buy. It's probably gonna be obvious that uh, this is not gonna fit. It actually misses by quite a bit. So I'm gonna try peeling an onion, just manually peeling it. In terms of effectiveness on a one to five scale, I would rate this a one. It just didn't perform the way I hoped. It actually didn't perform at all. I'm gonna try the left-handed oil test. And what that is, is a technique that I started doing many years ago to get a better understanding, personal understanding, of what it would be like to use these products if you have any form of dexterity problems or arthritis, or even if you just have normally slippery hands in the kitchen. I'm placing it. I will come down with the cutter and the grabber at the same time. Let's see what happens. Still not great. It was a bit difficult to push down. Uh, it kind of made me want to cry, and it wasn't the onion. It was actually the design of the peeler. And it took some force to push down, left-handed or right-handed. And it wasn't that secure. You know, once it pushes down, it kind of slaps down, and it just wasn't that pleasant. So I would rate usability a one. Wasn't that thrilled with it. Currently, the blade portion cuts the skin into four sections. I think what I would do, instead of four arms, I would give it five or maybe even six. I also would question the shape of the actual grabbers here and just make sure that they're optimized. Right now, they act a little bit like blades and they seem to be cutting the skin as opposed to grabbing and pulling the skin. They look like this, with this part cutting into the skin. And I think it's actually damaging the skin as, as rather than grab them. I would be curious to see if these grabbers should be some sort of shape like that. The reason I'm thinking a round shape is because one, there could be more to grab, a more surface area to grab, it would more gently grab the skin and it would have more contact points to pull the skin gracefully. The other thing I would look at is, this is a rather large device, the hinge point is here, the onion is here at the far side of the lever. Instead of putting the onion here, Place the onion here more, we actually have more leverage. So when the, now that would mean tilting the onion, it would require less force and give you some more control as you come down with the cutter and as you come down with the grabbers. If I did buy this, it would be for the purpose of showing it to a design class as an example of products that are just halfway thought out, had some promise, but just didn't deliver. My buy rating for this device is a one out of five. It's just not effective. Shrimp peeler. Its purpose in life is to peel shrimp. Let's see how well it works. The technique here is to feed it just under the shell. I'm gonna go in as far in as possible. Try to get to the very end. Give it a squeeze and the skin is off. I still have some legs in the way which pop off easily. But that's it. Let's try another. Feed it through. Go in deep. 
squeeze and we have a shell on top and a shrimp that pulls out relatively easily. In terms of effectiveness, I would rate the shrimp peeler a four. I think it works pretty well. It was definitely a useful tool. So working with raw shrimp, you almost don't have to do the oil test because the hands are pretty slimy anyway. But in this case, I am going to use the tool, uh, the peeler, with the left hand. And uh, this will really highlight how clumsy, or more clumsy, my left hand is than the right hand. I'm going to squeeze and pop it open. Squeeze force was pretty minor, so I didn't have any problem squeezing with my left hand. I think a lot of people will be able to exert that much force to squeeze it. What I did notice is that the shape of the handle is just a little more slippery than you would hope. It's stainless steel and it's just bent metal and it's very smooth and curvy. So it's a bit out of control. I don't know if you can see that as I'm squeezing it or holding it. It's slipping around, oh, quite a bit. It's slipping around quite a bit. In terms of usability, I would give this a rating somewhere between a three and a four. It's not difficult to use, but I think there are some very simple design changes that could have made it just a little bit easier to handle and a little bit easier to manipulate. This is a convex shape that's in contact with the shell. This is a concave shape that's in contact with the shrimp that you want to remove. I think I would experiment with making that just a little bit wider. So going wider like this would distribute the pressure a little bit more and the shell at top would be less likely to break open. The other thing I would do, and this is very noticeable when oiling up your hand, is this is a bit out of control. Now this is a very simple stamped stainless steel part. So there's not too much you can do here in terms of shape because the metal only wants to deform so much in the manufacturing process. There's a way to put a bit of a ducktail there so it doesn't slip forward like it's been doing, or to put some sort of shape in, in here in this direction so that as you're grabbing it, it doesn't want to slip forward or slip out of control. It also wants to slip this way a bit, so it actually flattened the part here. So right now it's pretty round and it is pretty easily twisting around in the hand. I think my buy rating for this would be a four. It actually is pretty effective on the shrimp. Buy it for your trip to the beach. Tater mitts. They are designed not to just scare your family, but to peel potatoes. I've got a bowl of potatoes that were just slightly boiled, and slightly boiled them loosens up the skin just a little bit. So let's see how it goes. The idea is to rub them, I'm using mainly my thumbs to start. Let's see what happens if I just rub hard. So what does happen, just like sandpaper, is once the potato skin gets a little caught up, in the rough surface, it stops peeling. So this isn't working as wonderfully as, as you would hope. It's taking a bit of work. At this point, I'd wonder why I'm not using a potato peeler. Let's give up on the Yukon Gold for now. It's about halfway peeled, but it'll still take a bit of work to finish. And I'm gonna try now with the um, baked potato. This is coming off a little better, but still I feel like the glove's clogged up. If I go in the fresh part of the glove, it works. But it's clogging up pretty easily and not releasing. So once it clogs up, they're pretty well stuck in there. Sometimes you may not have a potato peeler, so I'm gonna compare peeling this potato now using a knife. There could be something to the technique of boiling or keeping it in the water for shorter or longer amounts of time. But really the fact that the gloves clog up so easily make me think that boiling more would actually just clog up the gloves that much more because the skin would be softer. In terms of effectiveness, I would rate the tater mitts two out of five. It's not as magical or as instant as you would hope. I'm not gonna do the left-handed oil test on this because the gloves having slippery hands won't make any difference. What I'm finding is that I'm using thumbs a lot and both thumbs and both hands and, and fingers. So there's quite a bit of thumb pressure that's needed to get the thing started. Uh, same thing with finger pressure. Now you can also you know, hold this and 
squeeze it and rub against the hand. But there's a lot of finger action going on, which would not be as easy for someone who has any sort of hand problems to uh, accomplish. I don't think everyone is up to doing this. Cleaning the gloves is like cleaning rough sandpaper, just as you want to clean. You can't go out this with a wire brush, of course, and these little bits may not want to come out as cleanly as you would hope. On a one to five scale, I would give it a two. They're just not easy to use. And I would think I would drop that down to one if I'm also going to consider the work that's going to go into cleaning the gloves. I think there could be opportunity to make a device that would have this sort of texture on it and maybe something that's easier to clean, something that can go in a dishwasher. Something like a cheese grater that has this texture to it, but it's concave, so it really is curved this way. So the potato would fit into that curve, and what you would do is rub and spin the potato against it to get the skin off. If these little bits were somehow lined up, so if there were rows of these bits, and they could be staggered, right? So they could, the rows could be offset a bit. But what that would mean is that you can go at this with a brush across the side, and that would be easy to clean. My buy rating for the Tater Mitts is two out of five. I think I would buy this for someone who I don't like, if it was on sale. Garlic shaker. It is designed to peel garlic. This works by opening the top. The bottom will come out as well. What you see is on the cap, you have some pins. Inside, there are some horizontal fins, and the bottom cap is identical to the top cap. The manufacturer's instructions on the website say that the cloves of garlic should be left out to dry for five to seven days. But we don't really have time to do that, and who does? The instructions also say, let's shake it for 20 seconds, pour it out, and you'll have peeled garlic. So uh, let's go, let's give it a shot. I think that's 20, I'm gonna give it a few more seconds just to be sure. Okay, that's gotta be 20. Pour it out and... We've got one clove peeled and the other's still intact. Let's see if they're any easier to peel. No, actually this is rather difficult to peel, or at least there's no improvement in this one. So we had success with one clove, one out of four. In terms of effectiveness, I would give the garlic shake a one out of five. I just didn't see it peel garlic. It was rather ineffective. I'm gonna try the left-handed oil test. Okay, my left hand is pretty slippery. I'm going to unscrew and boy, what's happening now is that I'm not getting any ability to squeeze this and unscrew. Oh, the bottom's coming off, okay. Uh, but with my left or right hand oiled up as I spin one, uh, the weak link here is the fact that this is almost perfectly round, they're just about round, so it just wants to spin in my hands. I'm gonna put in four cloves of garlic. I will try closing this up with my left hand. And let's give it uh, another 20 seconds or so. Uh, let's see what we got. Well, it wasn't difficult to shake. It wasn't slippery because this curve just keeps your hand positioned in the middle. So whether it's slippery or not, shaking up and down doesn't really make a difference. But I still have some very intact garlic cloves. But in terms of usability, I would give it a four out of five. I think most people can handle this. Even weak hands, I think, would be able to get their hands around and pretty effectively do some shaking. In terms of approving this, I'm looking at the inside here. And there's a lot happening in terms of some ribs going on. Uh, horizontal ribs going on and the pins are in the cap. So I'm wondering if those ribs, those horizontal ribs that are inside are impeding the speed of that garlic if they're really all making it to the top and bottom, which I would think they would want to do. In terms of changing things, if we're just talking from the outside in terms of uh, usability ergonomic, this middle section here that you're grabbing is just a little too round. I would make that more oval because an oval shape is gonna be more difficult to spin out of control in your hand. You'll be able to get a better hold on it. 
Uh, that really comes into play when you're opening and closing the lids. This looks like it's well designed. So there's nothing wrong with this aesthetically, graphically or visually, it looks very promising. So the disappointment comes when you bring it home and it's just not performing the way you hoped. My buy rating for the garlic shaker is one out of five. I just couldn't get it to work. Potato Express. It is designed to peel potatoes. Let's test its effectiveness. Ooh, the cutter is a little hard to uh, adjust. Let's see if I can get it to behave. And then I'll place this down to position the potato. Uh-oh. That wasn't right. Let's see, maybe I did not pierce this as much, so I'm gonna give it a second chance. Let's make sure it's pretty secure down on the pins. I can adjust this down. Okay, let's continue. Okay, so a bit of a problem doing that one, but the potato is peeled. Of course, it doesn't get to the eyes of the potato and it doesn't get to the very tips of the potato. This is the Potato Express, not the Apple Express. Let's see what it does on an apple. There's still a bit that you want to peel. It seemed to miss a small strip here, but I'd say it's, you know, 95% successful. In terms of effectiveness, I would rate this a five out of five. I thought it was pretty efficient on both apples and potatoes. I will grab a baking potato. I may actually try squeezing this with my left hand and adjusting it. Not that easy. Definitely not easy to do one-handed. I'm gonna press the button and from this point it's hands-free. In terms of usability, there is a lot of fussiness in making these adjustments. That being said, once it is adjusted and you press the button, it's hands off and you just watch it go. For usability, I give it a rating of four out of five. Usable even if you have dexterity problems. So one of the actions that's definitely due for a redesign is the action of pinching. What this really needs is a little bit more of a ducktail here. This piece is actually uh, convex in this direction. Because of this convex shape, as you're trying to adjust this up and down, the fingers will more easily uh, fall off. What I would do instead is change this curve, not be convex, but be concave, so that your finger sits inside a divot. So it's gonna be much easier to adjust it up and down. I think the pins look a bit breakable. They're gonna undergo some force as you're pushing a potato, a sweet potato onto it, or an apple. And I would reinforce that. This just seems very uh, cheaply made and breakable. Even just like losing this pin or losing those pins or losing this linkage would make this entire product unusable. On a buy rating on a one to five scale, I would give this a one, which is a shame because it performs pretty well. It's just so cheaply made, I don't think it would last. It doesn't matter how a product looks or how it feels if it doesn't work. And four out of five of these products just did not work. I think in many cases, the design teams and the companies making products may be trying a little too hard to perform some simple kitchen tasks. So what that means in terms of buying kitchen products, uh, be very wary about their performance and their reason to exist. In many cases, you may be better off just using some of the tools that you already have in your kitchen or just using your hands to peel the food.